Today we'll be playing as one of the most interesting and underrated nations in the HRE, the Palatinat. Now I've recorded this live over on Twitch. You'll find the link in the description to that. And if you want to see more videos like these in the future, let me know in the comments. I would appreciate your feedback. Also, if we get 10,000 likes, we'll be covering Munchen, where we get their unique achievement. Today you're gonna see why Palatinat is such a great nation to play as. It has an amazing mission tree that not many people even realize it has. And you can even get PUs over Bohemia, over all of the Bavarian minor nations, all over Bavaria if it forms Bavaria for that matter. Aside from that, it starts as one of the electors of the HRE, so you can easily get an alliance with the Austrians from the very first day. That you go, we got the alliance already. And it has such a variety of playstyles that it's amazing. I mean, you start off with some of the best lands around you. You have your capital, which is a farmland, and Oberfels, which is a grassland. And everything in the south here is uh, mostly either grassland or farmland, with a little bit of uh, mountainous areas to help protect your lands once you take these provinces, let's say. I am looking at you, Salzburg, of course. Alright, so the first thing we're going to do, obviously, is we're going to get our rivals and we're going to get nations around us that we can easily attack, such as Baden over here, such as Vazburg as well, and even Trier. So I, 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 I thought about this for a second. The reality is you want to get rivals that have at least two provinces because some of the one province miners here, they might join a trade league. And if that happens, you're going to have to fight the entirety of the trade league, which is something you don't really want. We also got nations that are right next to us because we will be going for a humiliation war on the 11th of December once we can start getting our wards. Till that point, some of the diet go for whichever agenda best suits you. We're going to go in our case for the uh, increased production in Heidelberg, which is really good right now. And we're going to get the plus one mana privileges for all three of the estates. Don't worry about not having any uh, crownlands afterwards. It's A-OK. -okay. We will eventually get the uh, minus 25% advisor cost reduction privileges after we got one stability. So until that point, we're also going to go for supremacy over the crown. We're going to get patronage of the arts. And we have a semi-decent heir. It's your choice. You can disinherit him if you want. Or you can just uh, make him a general and hope for the best i.e. that he dies <laughs> we're gonna do the same with our leader holy shit dude six shock <laughs> okay that's gonna make it a lot easier to win the battles at the start and then everyone's gonna be like eh ludi how many time you restart to get the six shock bro not realistic guide bro and then after we're gonna seize the crownlands and uh we got 0 0.20 autonomy now as of uh, the recent patch so it's all okay but that being said we're still gonna develop this province twice whenever we get the chance because we do our mission and it helps out the economy aside from doing the mission so it's a great idea to do it and you get some cash as well for the beginning which since we cannot sell crownlands anymore does help quite a bit pretty shitty advisors not gonna lie <laughs> these are pretty pretty shitty advisors better than no advisors i guess we need the same mana points because we are really uh, lacking in mana points considering we start with the th one three one here uh we also will eventually be gunning for the bavarian lands because we have the mission to get the uh, Bavarian lands here. We can get a PU over all three of the uh, Bavarian minor nations. Or if they unify over Bavaria and even over the Bohemians. But once we get 7 cities and 15,000 soldiers, we get a lot of claims on the south parts. So let's do that right now, actually. Uh, let's delete the fort in Oberfals. This is a really useless fort. We don't need it. Even the capital fort's not amazing, but better than the other one. Because it's a capital fort, so it means... Um, it's a level 3 fort, not a level 2, because we have another one extra level from the capital itself. Let's also get some more allies. We're going to go with uh, mines to protect our northern flank here. And uh, we can even go for... You know what? We can go for land shit. Sure. That's it. That's all the allies we need. We don't need anybody else. We're also going to recruit the uh, free company, of course. We need some money for this. So what we'll do for that money is we're going to get the burger loans... 1% interest loans and we got 100 ducats and we only pay 0 0.08 interest for 1% loans which is basically the same like paying nothing really free company higher over here noise now we went up to our land force limit let's start getting some claims as well gonna try and uh, annex the nation of Baden and Vazbeg because these two nations are really really easy to annex and I'm gonna humiliate the nation of Trier so I can get the uh, age bonus over here, humiliate rival, and also so I can um, get 100 of each mana points, of course. That's the most important schnapple. schnapp doop doo Guys, remember that you always want to pause on the 11th of December and attack your rival on the 11th of December. I see this a lot of times in the comment section. Like, uh, oh, I, had, I wanted to attack that nation, but it had six allies. 
Wow, six allies. Mm, that's interesting. Did you actually attack them on the 11th of December? Was it on the 11th exactly? Yeah. Mm, okay. Because it, no nation can get six allies on the 11th of December. Anyway, I'll show you guys how to go over that, Jacob. Uh, even in my case here, even Baden allied Austria in my situation. So despite me wanting to attack them at the start, I'm going to get my claim on Württemberg instead of Austria, which is a lot more doable. Look at their alliance sets. And, um... I'll attack Baden once I have Austria in the same war with me, because they're also my ally, and this way it prevents them from uh, joining in Baden's war. That's how you go around that. All right, time to declare on uh, Trier. We're not going to co-belligerate Hesse for obvious reasons, because uh, we don't want to take anything from Hesse. And let's pray to Orange Jesus that we get some good dice rolls here. Let's also get our claim on Vesbug. Oh, these guys also allied to Hesse. Oh! <gasps> Ooh, I'm gonna get a claim on Strasbourg. All right, so we started this with a two dice roll negated by the obvious fact that we attacked in a river crossing and it's a forest, but still should be a fairly easy stack wipe. So there you go. That was Einstecken Vapenikum. Gonna leave one unit here to siege that down and the other units to siege down Koblanz. And we also gotta take care of Hesse. So actually what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave one here. I don't want to actually give Hesse the chance to recover or build up more troops. Right now they have 5,000. They're definitely going to build at least 2,000 more. But if I'm lucky, and they don't snipe for these units here, I might be able to take out the Hessian army. Fingers crossed, boys. Fingers crossed. Imperial Ambition. Ooh, that's really good. Let's continue getting our claim back here. We got the six maneuvering. Ah, I should have changed this guy before. No! We're going to catch you, I said. We're going to catch you. We're going to do it right now. There you go. We caught them up. We caught up with them. Because we have that awesome six maneuver uh, general. It's not going to be a stack wipe, but if we're... Oh my god, they got two nines in a row. What the schnapps? I got a nine now. I'm the one with the nine, boyo. And uh, we're going to chase him back and kill him off in uh, Niederhesse. They should not be able to retreat further away from Niederhesse. It's not going to uh, be one month. So that's a stack wipe. There you go, boyos. That was it. Now we can come back to uh, Oberhessen. Siege that down. And work our way from there, boys. That's it. That's it. We won the war right here. They got no more troops left. Alrighty, boys, we got uh, the Siege of Hesse. I'm going to wait a little bit before I peace out Hesse because I uh, need to get my diplomat back. Oh, la, 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 la. Finally, after 800 days, we managed to actually siege down everything here. We're going to peace out Hesse first. Before we peace them out, we're going to do a 98.7 head move. We're attacking Strasbourg because Strasbourg's only other ally is obviously Hesse. So, booyah, schnackaboo, and they're dead. Whilst we're at war with uh, Strasbourg, we can piece them out now. Also, we're going to cancel some of their rivals. And of course, no, actually, I'm going to cancel all of their alliances. I'm doing this because by canceling all of Hesse's alliances makes them weak and other nations might actually attack them and kill them off in the process. When it comes to the uh, nation of Trier, I'm going to go for the show of strength, which is going to give me 100 of each mana point. And that means I get 300 extra mana points. We are lacking a lot of mana points because we have a shitty starting leader. So this is definitely going to come and help. And now Mainz declared war on Hesse. As I was saying, it's going to make them an easy target. So Mainz is basically trying to take advantage of that and take Hesse out. Nice. I found my way into Wurzburg as well, boyos. We're going to attack the nation of Mulhouse, which is allied to Wurzburg. This way we bypass all of the massive alliance that Wurzburg has right now. Where actually we can attack Ingolstadt, which only is allied to Rothenburg. That's a super easy war right there. Holy snaps. So many options, so little time, it's unbelievable. Easy to boys, it's unbelievable, isn't it? Let's get a claim on Trier as well for the next war against them if they're still alive. Alrighty, boyos, it is over for Strasbourg. Nowhere else to go. They are dead ski, all their money, and their life is ours. So the reality is this is 16 development. It's actually one of the best provinces in the HRE. It's a lot of aggressive expansion. But because we took this, our economy is going to be considerably better after we actually core it up and we make it an integral part of our country. We're going to come over to Heidelberg first because we're going to be attacking Ingolstadt and their ally of Rothenberg. Landshut would actually join in on this. What? We cannot co-belligerate Rothenberg because then Austria would join since they are a free city in the HRE, but we can't completely wipe out their army from uh, the very first day of the war. That way we only have to deal with the uh, Ingolstadt's army afterwards since uh, Rothenberg is a dead ski. Go. Leave behind one unit so they don't build any more soldiers. And let's get military access through these guys. Cancel the military access we had through the other boyos. Oh shit! No, 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 no,
No, what I was gonna say is, uh, we're gonna siege down this. I was sure they're gonna do this. I knew it. So they're gonna get there on the 11th of May. We're gonna get there on the 9th. So we're actually gonna engage them here. And uh, with a little bit of luck, we're gonna win that battle. We got, oh, we got a seven. They got a zero. Oh my God. We actually stacken the panicum them. Yeah, that sounded a little bit weird the way I pronounced that, but uh, we'll just, we'll just move on. And let's get military access through Landschnitzel. Aber unser Gott is this a province? Yeah, yeah. Oh, nein. Ludwig embarrassed the court. I don't know why I'm French now. I'll apologize. Sorry, guys. I'm back to being German. I'm back to being German. Everything is fine. Oh, das ist ein Rothenbergenstein. Yeah, yeah. All right. Let's, uh, let's peace out Rothenberg. We're not gonna annex them. Screw that, man. Too much aggressive expansion. We're gonna also, um, cancel one of their rivals so we get a little bit of extra prestige. And let's bring our armies over to this and provincing. Munchen's got 10,000 units. I have a little bit more than that. But here's what they don't have. They don't have pizzazz. And because I have pizzazz, I'm gonna vassalize Ingolstadt. And Munchen's at war with Ingolstadt. So I think you can see where I'm going with this, boys. I think you can see where I'm going with this. We take leadership. Yeah, we take the leadership. Ulm is in it also. I had a suspicion. That's why I was looking before. No problem. No problem. We can call all of our allies because it's a defensive war. <laughs> so we're going to completely crush them with the Austrians' help. <laughs> ah, you got yourself in lots of shit now. Oh, yes. I love cheesing E4. I'm kidding. This is not an E4 cheese, okay? This is actually not a cheese. It's just playing regular E4. It's calling all of our allies. Yeah. Oh, so good. So good. We're going to have to chill anyway for a while because... um. We have quite a little bit of aggressive expansion now. Maybe just attack Mulhouse. Yeah, we can take Mulhouse too, and then we'll chill. We'll chill after, I promise. All right, the war is over, everybody. So we're getting too much aggressive expansion. Why is this so much aggressive expansion? Hold on a second. Something happened here. So we're giving both of these provinces over to our ally of Landshut. And in return, we vassalize the nation of Munchen with one province. And the reason we're doing that is because we only get seven aggressive expansion. Get the money they got as well. And we can even make them cancel their claims on us. Booyah schnackaboo. And that's pretty much it. And because we got two vassals now, we can also do the strong duchies privilege that Yago lowers their liberty desire by 10%. It also means that we don't get a malice with the emperor. The emperor is not going to ask us for unlawful territory now. Also seize crownlands. We got up to 15% crownlands already. Nice. Plus two amazing vassals. So in the next phase is going to be to get our core back for a Munchen, which is 15 development for our vassal. We're also going to integrate both of these guys in the process. We're also going to chill now because we got quite a little bit of aggressive expansion since uh, taking lands in the south of Germany, which is one of the um, highest development areas of Germany and the highest aggressive expansion areas in Germany is pretty difficult. So yeah, we got to chill. So we're going to attack the nation of Mulhouse and we're not going to cobaldrate Württemberg because we don't want to get all of Württemberg's allies in the war against us. And I know that I said that we're just going to chill. We are going to chill. This is a tactical chilling situation in which we, um, we have a bit of fun whilst we're chilling. Nobody said I'm going to take anything, okay? So it's technically still chilling. You have no proof against it. Stop judging me, goddammit. <laughs> Let them siege down our vassal's lands. I don't I don't care if they siege down my vassal's lands at all. Go for it, bruh. This is why I like having two vassals from the start as the Palatinat. Because, like, when I'm attacking these guys, for example, they're sieging down the capital of my vassals. Like, I couldn't care less about it. You might be wondering, Ludi, why are you paying your 1% loan? I'm paying my 1% loan because I got no loans anymore. And it means that it cancels out the uh, privilege and I can take another 1% loan whenever I need it. And the big difference is that... Now, instead of 20 ducats, it's 29 ducats per loan. So more monies. Fuck yeah. Everybody loves the monies. All right, guys. If we're lucky, we get some decent rolls here. We should be able to kill off the uh, Vuttenbuggians. Come on, everybody. We got a uh, four. Still was enough because it was a defensive battle. So Vuttenbugs got no more troopers and Mulhouse doesn't either. So essentially, we won the war again. Holy shit, Ludi. You're cheating, Ludi. Look how easy. You have 12,000 manpower impossible ludi what the fuck bro it's called manpower management and not sucking at the game <laughs> all right everybody so uh stuttgartsky is out that means we can take all their money take all their women and leave them naked and alone and sad leave them very very sad that's what it's all about here guys and by sad i mean we're essentially gonna um, cancel all of their alliances so that now if somebody wants to attack them it's free for all boys it's free for all or it's not free for all depends these guys on the other hand we're gonna fully 
Sony Annex, of course. And no coalitionen. Oh my god, that is amazing. All right. There you go. We also can disband the mercenary company because they have no more manpower pool anymore. We can either get a new mercenary company or we can just get regular infantry. It's up to us. Get military access so we can actually merge all of our troops. And let's see who our next target is. Oh, no. I said we're going to chill, right? Yeah, we're going to chill for a while now. That's what we're going to do. Hey, we can even accept Zvabion culture, guys. We are the Zvabions. We got 36% of our country is Zvabion. That means uh, these guys in the south here. Because ours culture is actually Renish. And look at that, Baden attacked Vattenbug. Yay! I hope Baden fully annexes Vattenbug, so when I attack Baden myself, I can fully annex Baden. That would be the best outcome here. Please, Baden, do me a solid and fully annex them, sir. Please do it. I would love you so much if you do that. Guys, oh shit, you're right. Guys, it's the dream. It's the dream. It's Baden Vattenbug. Baden attacking Vattenbug, creating the modern German state of Baden Vattenbug. This is how it happened historically. There's proof. There's this video. This is the proof here. Please don't quote me if you have history classes and then you get a 2 out of 10. <laughs> it's not my fault, okay? Don't blame it on me. <laughs> I also can uh, get a PU over the Danes because we have the same dynasty, by the way. And uh, I plan on to, but a little bit later, not now. Not Uvzanowski. Actually, let me improve with them a little bit so I can get the royal marriage. Just in case something happens with their heir and uh, I can claim the throne. Oh my lord! Can we get an amen for Baden, chat? Can we get an amen for Baden? Baden committed the greatest act of generosity in the world. They fully annexed Wuttenberg, making it easier for me to annex them in the future. And getting rid of Wuttenberg, which had a lot of aggressive expansion with me. Holy shit, you guys are still struggling to get this man? Nassau's been at war with Trier for the past four years and they still haven't gotten the fort in Trier. <laughs> oh, Lord Jesus Christ. Forgiveth this nation. Actually, doesn't Baden-Württemberg also have like Ulm and all of this area here in the south? Like Breisgau, Constance, all of this? It does, right? I think so. Oh, I forgot to get my money from here, boy. Yo, hello, bala bum. There you go. We got the money. Let's get a new agenda. And... Manpower stock exchange in Strasbourg. That is good because I need a stock exchange and I get one production. I also have to lower the autonomy. I completely forgot to lower the autonomy in these provinces. They have a little bit of devastation. And the truth is that I want to start getting prosperity in these provinces. You cannot get prosperity whenever you have devastation in provinces. The fastest way to get rid of that devastation is to just improve the development a little bit. So we got rid of devastation. Now we're going to get passively going to start getting prosperity. It's going to start ticking up a little bit. Another thing I want to do is um, I want to get 10 development in every single one of my provinces. And this is because it's going to passively going to start spawning in Renaissance in these provinces. And there you go. Everyone's getting development. Oh, no, I forgot about this guy. Uh, one more. You lose prosperity if you have devastation. Yes, you lose it. If you have devastation in a province and you have prosperity, the entire state's going to start losing prosperity if you have devastation in just one province. So make sure you do not have devastation in your provinces. I might just attack uh, Trier next. This way I can start expanding into uh, the western part of Germany, which is pretty rich as well. And it gives me a nice layout with the French. So basically I prevent the French or anyone from there to come into the German areas. So why not? We pretty much secured the Bavaria areas now since we have the vassals we just got to take care of um land shit that's pretty much it so we'll do that later a little bit <gasps> oh my god oh my god genoa won a war against the ottomans what i've never seen oh <gasps> holy shit what the fuck happened in the balkans <laughs> The Ottomans got their asses kicked. All right, for our second tier reform, we're going to go for the manpower, obviously. And just so you guys know in the future, you always want to go monthly autonomy. Never go for the max promoted cultures because it's irrelevant. Two is enough. Trust me, you're going to become an empire. So all of these cultures are going to be the same as your primary culture. And uh, if you want to accept any other two, it's more than enough. You need the autonomy, especially early on, so you can lower the autonomy faster. Later on, go for advisor cost. You can change this with an extra admin free policy whenever you get two admin policies, which is in the future. For the time being, of course, first you should go for advisor cost. Also go for production efficiency, the extra 250 governing capacity, and the extra absolutism, unless you want to switch over to a theocracy or a republic. These are your reforms in 90% of cases, 90% of games, if you're playing as a monarchy. So we got Renaissance appeared in Strasbourg, and uh, that means we can uh, adopt it now. We just need a little bit more cash. Alrighty, boys, it is time for another war. Another day, another war. We're going to go ahead and we're going to set Koblenz as our war target here. But most likely we're going to take, uh, we might actually make Trier our vassal. 
Let's see how much AE that is. 25 AE. We can make them a vassal or we can even annex them. Oh my god, I'm so annexing the whole country right now. Let's go. And we got Admin Tech 5, which means it is time to get the best idea in the game. It's quantity. So, we got Clev Siege down. That means we can uh, get some monies from them. And um, I'm even going to ask them to cancel some of their alliances. There you go. And last but not least, of course, Zenashon of Zetrier. We got two options. We can either vassalize them, in which case we get an elector, which is our vassal. And that's what normal people would do. Or if you're an aggressive son of a bitch, you can just uh, annex them, get their lands directly. Don't give a schnapps about the electoral ship. And that's what I'm going to do instead. This way I can start expanding in the other areas in the north. Honestly, my favorite part after you get the missions done is that you basically have permanent claims on all of Central and South Germany. And that essentially means 25% cheaper to quarrel of this stuff up. And we're one province away from getting the Union over land shit. We just got to get Stuttgart under our control. So if you guys want to see that, I invite you over on Twitch where we will be continuing this saga. And then we'll upload the unedited VODs to my second channel if you don't want to watch it live and don't forget for 10,000 likes we'll do that awesome München achievement and also check out this amazing video until the next time and I want to give a very big thank you to all of my channel members patreon members as well as my twitch supporters I really wouldn't be able to do this without all of your support